Yo, what is happening 2K family, 2K mechanic back with another video for you guys. And in today's video, we're going to go over to this, go over this JT Thor base and see how well it performs after all the patches. I think we're after patch three as of the making of this video. So we want to kind of test to see if JT Thor is a good base because JT Thor is very similar to uh, O'Shea Brissett from last year as far as visuals and then JT Thor was goaded at the beginning before the patches happened everybody liked to use JT Thor but now I heard that JT Thor is not a great base and people have a lot of issues with it so we're going to do a deep dive on JT Thor base and see what we found out but before we get into that if you guys can please like the video subscribe if you're new definitely helps the channel grow and we back on the YouTube grind trying to get you guys more and more 2k24 material Okay, all right, so I'm gonna go ahead and put on the screen the make percentage of my particular test and let me give you guys the setup for the test. So number one, I only took a 40 shot sample size from each of the corners. So as you can see on the table, it has LC, LH, top, RH, RC, and that just stands for left corner, right corner, left hash, right hash, and then the top of the three point line. So all these shots are three pointers. So the so basically I had the base jumper, which is JT Thor, the release one, which was default swing. I didn't have any badges, no hot zones, and this is on push release. So the purpose of this test for me was to see basically what I define as a stroke zone for this particular base, and also to see if there are any areas on the court where certain bases excel more than other bases, because I was curious to learn that. All right, and for reference stroke zone i define stroke zone is or the way i define stroke zone is based on if you can make 70 percent of your of the jumpers from that particular area uh given that uh timing i would consider you know pretty much that in the stroke zone so if we look at the chart the stroke zone for JT Thor base, I would define as 25 milliseconds. Now, if you look at 585 milliseconds and 590, you can see that we do have some areas of the court pr primarily from hash to hash that are over 70%, but I don't count that as the stroke zone because I define the stroke zone as having 70% at all areas on the court, not just a few. So in all areas of court where we shot over 70%, it started at 505, 595 milliseconds and ended at 620 milliseconds, giving a total uh, stroke zone or uh, complete what I would define as a, a, a massive or complete green window at, for 25 milliseconds. OK, now this is a little different. I first did this test. I didn't share the data on my channel, but I first first did this test at the beginning of the year before we got patch one to because I was trying to find a good base for a low rated jumper to see if. Uh, a low three pointer, pr preferably a 78, was usable for this 2K. So, when I did my test early in the year, JT Thor probably had the biggest uh, stroke zone. It was like 40 milliseconds or 43 milliseconds. But after all the patches, now we're only looking at a 25 millisecond. Hence, why a lot of people say uh, JT Thor is not a good base. All right, so key takeaways from the data is uh, it, it looks like the corners are not really good for this jump shot it looks like you get more bang for your buck or this base if you use it at the hashes and at the top meaning maybe some people that shoot off the dribble it, it may benefit people that shoot off the dribble but keep in mind this this data set is for a catch and shoot uh, situations only but you know but it didn't have any badges so i think it probably should perform well you shooting off the dribble at the top all right so basically like i said the stroke zone is 25 milliseconds from 595 to 620 and this is a good uh late or this is not a good late shot so if you do slightly late on a lot of your shots you won't this this jump shot will not help you anything after 620 uh is defined as slightly late and it, it's gonna be brick city so your best bet is if you're shooting so 585 590 is slightly early range so your best bet is to if you're gonna shoot this use this jumper to be slightly early on your release versus late and remember y'all we use push release 
for all of these tests because that's pretty much what I believe is most people use push. So that's pretty much the data. So I think if you rather you use release, jump, or set point, and if you use jump, you're a maniac. I don't see how you use jump, especially for this base. But just remember this the timing will probably be shifted up or down, depending on the release. But I'm pretty sure the window size will be the same. It's just that it'd be shifted down a little bit, make it a little faster or slower, depending on your release. Okay. All right, so my final verdict for this base is, and I guess, let me get some, let's get some, let's go to the Gatorade and get some jump shots up. All right. All right, so my final verdict for this jumper is, I don't think, for me, I don't think it's pretty viable. I do have, as you can see, me shooting, shooting the Gatorade. I do have... I tried to make the best of what I could with the, uh, a jumper that I like from a visual cue perspective. Um, and I'll post that on the screen somewhere so you guys can kind of see that, see what uh, what blend and everything I use and what you, for what you see on the screen. But anyway, my final verdict is I don't, I don't like this jumper primarily because the cue for it isn't a big visual cue. It isn't a big visual cue. Like you have to be very precise with the JT Thor, which doesn't leave, leave room for a lot of error. And the build that I'm using is a 6'8", six, 6'8", eight, six, eight, kind of like a stretch, more so for threes and maybe a back end build if you're playing Rec or Pro-Am. Uh, so it has a 78 three ball. But yeah, I don't, I don't, I, re I don't really care for the JT Thor. I just think I think the the stroke the stroke zone is is quite small, and then just the the if you have the right releases it might work, but just the way the JT Thor base and, and the way you have to get releases makes it a little makes it a little tougher to to consistently green in my opinion. Yeah. Also, I think this jumper is better if you have slower releases. I don't think if the faster you make this jump shot, I think the less dependent it is. So if you have a high release speed. I just think the less dependable it is. So if you do use this base and you do have the right releases, I would say you probably want to be in the the A, the B plus to A range instead of the A plus range or B plus to A minus range to really take advantage of this particular base. All right, that's all I have for this video. 2K Mechanics signing out. Hope you guys found this video informational. And if you want a more detailed make percentage right i guess i could boost up the sample size to 200 jumpers for each area um but i kind of want to save that for when i put this on I, I my i my end goal would to be put all the jumpers that people have onto like a website database so people can kind of look up this data and look up visual cues um so that's my end goal for this and kind of sharing this data and getting everybody's thoughts and comments on it because i would like to move this to like a website so everybody can have access to it and kind of pick and choose jumpers that that they feel might be able to help them because this is a tough year for shooting for a lot of people so we want to kind of have some type of resource available for people to choose jump shots and try different jump shots and look at cues and get the data on it that way because uh, i know 2k labs they do do a lot of jump shot testing but me, I would like more specific jumpers, right? Because I think people are looking for specific jumpers and what is the make percentage on specific jumpers with releases and certain blends. So that's where I feel like this channel will kind of help or this website would help people. But anyway, I rambled on for too much. Uh, 2K Mechanics signing out. I appreciate you guys for listening and watching. Let me know your comments in the section below, which I think, do y'all use JT Thor? Do you not use it? Do you think it's trash? And if you do have success with it, what releases are you using with it to to kind of alleviate some of the inconsistencies of this jumper. All right, I'll catch you guys on the next video. Peace, y'all.